Doctor, thanks ever so much. Always good to talk to you. Um, we, we, that's the backlog in in terms that people can relate to. Twenty twenty four. Paint a picture for us of what the backlog looks like in human terms, if you can. Hi, Colin. Nice to see you again. Um, so the thing to remember is, throughout the entire pandemic, the most Things with most clinical needs, such as cancer referrals, were never stopped, were never being delayed, right? So that always carried on. We're talking about things like normal routine referrals, say pediatrician referrals or um, kidney specialist referrals or physiotherapy referrals or patients who've been waiting months to get their ear syringed and wax removed, you know? So those routine referrals either were delayed because of limited resources and capacity because people were off sick because of COVID or there just wasn't enough appointments available. So those patients will now start seeing their appointments getting pulled forward. There was also talk that they might be get sent to maybe areas outside their catchment. So they might have to travel or the NHS might reimburse some of their travel and stay if they have to go to another part of the country to maybe get the treatment. But I'm not sure how realistic that might be because I'm sure you'd appreciate if you're going to an operation or a specific appointment, you might want to take someone with you, right? So I'm not sure how many people um, any of this would cover. But it's a really good question. It's a really good question. My natural feeling would be, blimey, if, if I needed a hip replacement and I was in permanent pain, uh, I'd bite your hand off. Of course, I'd go and stay in a hotel, government paying for it. Maybe they're providing a taxi as well. But I'd like to wake up, look gazing into the face of a loved, loved one the next morning, <laughs> uh, whereupon I've got to pay. Yeah. Yeah, so those are things to just think about. But in terms of just service provision, if more clinic times become available, if more clinic hours become available, and more clinics open up throughout the country, I think it just gives everyone much more of an option of expediting their appointments and not having to wait months and months. So that's exciting. I know the government has been struggling with a waiting list. I think it's two weeks, isn't it, to get a cancer referral. But and I know the way you've depicted it is that, you know, if, you, if you're worried about a cancer diagnosis, uh, that, that's been happening throughout COVID. But you also mentioned, say, for instance, some routine work on, say, the kidneys. And as, as we all know, it, it's a spectrum, isn't it? Sometimes you'll be going in for something that seems pretty innocuous. And actually, there's some bad news attached to it. And, and I suppose that will be the worry for a great number of people, won't it? That when they're in the system, actively in the system, seeing people like you face to face, things stuff gets divulged things emerge that lead on to a diagnosis nobody was expecting absolutely and i would urge everyone actually if you're waiting for a routine appointment and it's been anywhere between four to eight weeks or you've not heard back from the hospital either call the waiting you know call the secretaries of the department call the hospital itself to see where your appointment is or contact your gp again to chase up that appointment because although it is a routine thing it's not something that we should ignore because you're absolutely right it could you know often it can be just a routine things and can end up being sinister not always so just because it is routine you don't want to sit on it either so i would encourage you to chase it if it's been you know four to six weeks and you haven't heard but yeah, Yep, all the cancer or the urgent, urgent referrals, by law, everyone gets in within two weeks. And in my experience, the, the department's actually really good. Yeah. Most people I know get seen within seven days. They're quite good.